Welcome friends, welcome back to the hangar. It is a beautiful blue sky day. Temperature's a little cold today. It's probably, I don't know, minus five, minus six Celsius. Um, and we're gonna take a run up to Perry Sound for lunch. Cold air should mean a nice smooth ride. Julie's gonna try out the Lightspeed Delta Zulu. So she just did, did the- did my hearing test, my test. Did the hearing test. I have some thoughts on them. I've worn them on, on three flights now. Um, I will save my thoughts until Julie gives hers. Okay. And um, we're still testing out a bunch of different cameras. So I've got cameras all over the outside of the plane, the inside of the plane. This is the last test flight. And then we'll do a video where I sort of break down um, what those cameras look like. And I'll put up a, B, C, D for the different cameras. So you can tell me down in the comments section, which camera you like, which camera you don't like. Um, and I'll tell you right now, one of the cameras uh, is already <laughs> at the bottom of a drawer. It's not even worth testing. And you'll, 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 if you watched the last video, you'll know which camera that was. So let's jump in the plane and get going. Up, up, Bravo, Quebec, Tower Spacing is good. Traffic department between you and number one. Okay, that's oh, us. Quebec. <laughs> Mike, pick the uniform tower, line up white runway one, two. Line up white one, two, Mike, pick the uniform. 1055, Jules. Yankee Romeo Whiskey Tower, nicely done. Exit left on Charlie, contact ground 184. Thanks, Mike Victor, uniform tower, left turn out, winds 110 at 11, gusting 16, clear takeoff from my 1 2. Left, left turn out, Mike Victor, uniform. Alpha Tower, Southbound, Golf Hotel, Zulu Julia, Morning Chum 1 2, Airport, Sasha. Golf Hotel, Zulu Julia, Joshua Tower, standby, traffic on final. Golf Golf, Bravo, Quebec Tower, the winds 110 at 11, gusting 16, clear to land from my 1 2. Yes, land, go, 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 Quebec. Three Yankee Alpha Tower number two, following Cessna half mile fine. Hey, looking for traffic, but don't need Alpha. Mike Victor, uniform tower, change armor frequencies for flight following Toronto 133 decimal four. If you wish, good day. Good day. Mike Victor, uniform. Ashton Tower, Fox Trot, Whiskey Lima, Victor with Delta. That was busy. It was busy. I'm sure in the next little while we will see lots of planes out in the distance. Although maybe that was the exact time that everyone returned. Yes, the hour, the hour long uh, <laughs> lesson. Because I'm looking around going, I don't see. Leaving altitude. So I hope all the cameras are running. I don't know. Me too. Uh, this one. Already off? Well, I can't tell. It doesn't have a screen and it doesn't have a tally light on the front. So there's no red light. You don't know if it's running or not. Might run, might not. Who knows? Um, and so that's a problem with that camera. If you can't tell that it's running, then you have to assume that it isn't. Yeah, but then you're, it's never on. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not useful. Leaving altitude. She's, she's got issues with your altitude. I know. She always has issues with my altitude. <laughs> I think I've got the tolerance set, set too too tight. Um, I've got it set if I waver 100 feet, which is pretty easy to do to waver 100 feet. I could lean forward. Yeah, at this point, you <laughs> lean forward, you lean back, and you've wavered. So, we're gonna put in the autopilot, so the lady doesn't yell at me all the time about leaving I, altitude. I like the lady I, Me at too. <laughs> and I, I probably will fly by hand most of the time because it's good practice and it's not that but for longer trips like going to Quebec City or you know going if we want to go to Arkansas mm -hmm. and especially flying through congested airspace like Ottawa and Montreal to get there holding altitude and track is important and also that flight if oh, it's the traffic if it's really bumpy it's it's hard anyway which means this side of the panel we have to rework in order to fit the autopilot in. Oh no, it was so beautifully cut. Yeah, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get six pack arrow to design and cut another one and they can make it exact it, they've got the outline, right? So all of this stuff will fit exactly because we've already done it once. So I think this panel is gonna move over 
here, centered above the, okay. the yoke. Move the intercom up beside the radio. Okay. And then put the uh, put the, the the panel for the the autopilot in here, where the com is. That sounds like a big project. It will be a big project. Um, that'll probably be a, a week in Chris's shop putting that in. So that and sadly, I think the clock is going to get no! deleted. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I've had I've made. I bought five or six of them, trying to find the best parts. Which is too bad, because I can I can see that one really clearly. I, like, I, I have to put my face yeah. pretty close to see the... I really like the, the analog clock. clock. I really like the analog clock, and I may leave it there in the hopes that at some point I can find one that will work forever, for a longer period of time. But we, but my clock maker, my clock maker, the clock maker that I found, <laughs> um, built that out of, out of parts from five or six other Cessna clocks. It's a, it's a, I mean, yeah. It's a 61-year-old clock. It's probably run for many years. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we, when we redo the panel... Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> this this <laughs> intercom... I'm going to have to decide what to do with this intercom, because it introduces a lot of noise. I have to work really hard in the edit to try to get rid of the noise. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel from the comment section, like there's one or two frequencies that I can't hear <laughs> that make it through. And I, I can't hear them, so I don't know that, and I get people saying, oh, I can really hear that high-pitched sound. And so it's probably a noise that I cannot hear that's making it through in the edit. Um, and that's from this intercom unit, and the company that makes the intercom unit has been absolutely zero help. Um, so I'm going to replace it with something else, I think. Well, that'll be the opportune time. Yeah. So that's the Aurelia Rama Airport. I get it? Uh, they have a fantastic restaurant. They have a great restaurant. Who, who, is, who runs the restaurant? Uh, it's, it's, it's a local. It's a local restaurant. It's amazing. It's, they make everything from scratch. It's fantastic food. Just crazy how absolutely massive some of those... Uh, gravel pits are. Well, they've been around for a long time. They've built a lot of roads and a lot of basements. That one gets filmed in a lot. Because you can drive around it, or? Um, or because they've just put their name on the list. And it's and it's massive, and it... it if you've ever seen a TV show uh, where there's some sort of futuristic space planet that, you know, is devoid of all, and it was shot in Toronto, with lots of the bar, it was probably shot in that, in that travel pit, yeah, where it's supposed to look like, you know, post-apocalyptic, somewhere, yeah, I remember when I first got my pilot's license, I flew over it, and, mm -hmm. and took a little video, I had a little bit of video camera, and took a video of it for a director, because he wanted to see what it looked like. Oh, there uh, you go. For a job, but he didn't want to. Uh, they didn't want to spend the you know two and a half hours to drive out there. So it was much easier for me just to get the plane and fly over it and show them. And I probably still have that video somewhere. I can only imagine what format it's in. Oh yeah, it would have been. <laughs> if I can dig it up, I will insert that video in this section of, of the video. Please excuse the graininess. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, it would have been the best thing going. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of... Technology has really, and, and digital filming has yeah. just changed so much. One, two, four. One, two, four. Five, sub five. Two, one, five, zero degrees. Visibility greater than niner, sky clear, temperature minus four, dew point minus one three, altimeter three zero three niner. Muskoka, automated weather observation system, observation taken at one five four two Zulu, wind one zero zero at niner, wind variable zero eight zero degrees. 
to 150 degrees, visibility greater than niner, sky clear, temperature minus 4, dew point minus 13, altimeter 3039. Three Muskoka, automated weather observation system, observation. Very sound traffic, this is Sector 172, Fox Park, Mike 6 Uniform, currently 5 miles to the southeast, inbound for landing, full stop, very sound. Just think, if we had $10 million, we could buy a cottage on this lake. I was looking at some of those cottages, <laughs> so-called cottages. <laughs> Counting the number of outbuildings, and it's... Yeah. And the decks they've built on the lake, so they have lots of, like, periods of full sunshine. Yep. Very sound traffic, Fox Talk, Mike Fix Uniform, planning on crossing midfield at a uh, pattern altitude to join the left downwind runway 35, full stop, very sound. Very sound traffic, Fox Talk, Mike Fix Uniform, turning final runway 35, full stop, very sound. Oh, really, I think it's going to form Kipping on the final runway. Wow, the crosswind. Sock would have been helpful. Well, there's the sock. It is full crosswind. Full 90 degree crosswind. Still can't see the sock, so... It's, it's burnt out over here. Yeah. Okay. So, here we are, Perry Sound Airport. It's a nice little airport. It's got fuel, it's got a lounge and a restaurant. It's got a windsock that uh, we couldn't really clock from the air. It's, it's a little windy. It's a little, it's a little windy. <laughs> There's been a couple of planes circling above trying to figure out which runway to use. But it's a great little airport and um, they're redoing the runway. You might have seen that when we landed. You'll see it when we take off maybe. It's going to be 5,000 feet long, 100 and some feet wide, and they're hoping to get more of the uh, global vacation traveler who uh, who pops by in their jet. It would accompany some of those very large cottages. Those we big saw cottages that we saw the on the way in, yeah. And uh, most of those people now land at Muskoka Airport, so they're hoping to have this one just a little bit farther along to make it closer to the big cottage. So the uh, the restaurant's closed. What are you going to do? We're gonna go to Aurelia Arama and we're gonna try the restaurant there. So we'll jump back in the plane and we'll get flying again. Okay, look at that right now. I'm gonna say that's a 90 degree crosswind. Doesn't matter which end of the runway we take off from. Perry Sound traffic, Fox Talk, Mike Six Uniform, taking off runway 35. Perry Sound? I don't hear anyone else in the pattern. Bring Jules. Okay, downwind checks, both. Everything's on, everything's in, both. Locked, carp heat is on, mixture is rich. 10 degrees of flaps. Waypoint. 20 degrees of flaps. Really traffic, box shot, like the uniform turning final, one, two, full stop, Aurelia.
those trees right at the end. They've got another couple of years before they're... A real problem? The sock looks like it's going in a different direction than when we flew over it. Well, it's right down the runway now. Oh, perfect. Aurelia, traffic, Fox Trot, Mike Thick Uniform, backtracking 1 2 for the apron. Aurelia? So we've made it to Aurelia Rama. The restaurant here is open. <laughs> Let's go eat. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, so I'm having the pick roll, and Julie's having... I am having a vegetable soup and a salad. It's tasty. I've already started. Does lunch get any better than a good meal part? Pretty good. So I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> over there, and in other places around the airport, there's probably 40 sets of floats um, taken off for the winter, because we're about to... We're about to enter a time period in Canada where float flying is a little tough. <laughs> so, we're at the Aurelia Airport. Lunch was great at the Tailwinds Cafe. I had the pickerel. Julie had the chicken soup and a salad. salad? It's really good. And it's back to Oshawa. So, Jules, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the headset? Well, I, so, so far it's pretty comfortable. I mean, I have, I've only worn it for... I don't know, an hour and a half? An hour and a half, maybe, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not very long, and it's been probably a month and a half since I've been in the plane and worn the other set, so yep. I have no real, I, I'm trying to, I can't really compare it to the other set that I have been wearing. Yep. Um, but, okay, doesn't seem to hurt my head, which is good. I often find that they, my head doesn't fit, my ears, my head don't fit into them. Yep. Uh, after a bit of time, my earrings have settled in into, into a place where they're not being pinched with that, which is good. Those of us who wear earrings, uh, it's always a problem with uh, anything you squish against your head. The sound seems really neat. Like, I, I don't seem to have a problem. I can see, hear myself okay without okay. any problem. I can hear you. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, it seems okay. I mean, right now, it's doing fine. I probably won't wear them again. Uh, the sound was great. Mm -hmm. I liked the hearing test, and it brought up tones that I would normally hear other traffic sounded much better to me. Um, the problem I had is they don't fit my head. <laughs> uh, so I, Glenn, if you've never noticed, Glenn has a very small head. Right, so I, I, even even these bows I've got adjusted to the smallest size and they just barely fit my head. And so those ones don't, they, they sit too low because they don't fit properly. I can't adjust them small enough. And then they don't clamp my head enough to really get the sound uh, cancelling to work properly. And those are a great time to be testing either, because we've got tubes stuck in there, and so, and everything you know, else. Yeah. All, it's not quite sealed properly, just because life. So, my, my feeling is I won't wear them just because they don't fit me properly, but there's so, so much I do like about them. I like that it, it has the audio test, and I like the carbon monoxide detector. I like the fact that it gives you an audio of carbon monoxide, that there's a problem rather than just having to find something on the on the panel that tells you. Does that mean I'm in charge of that now? You're now in charge of that. You are now <laughs> in charge of carbon monoxide. Um, but I, I don't think I can wear them. They just they just don't fit well enough. So I'm going to stick with the bows. And another thing that, that I really liked is when I listened to my voice later in the edit, that microphone sounds so much better. Ah. It's got a much warmer tone than, than the Bose uh, microphone. I suspect most, most most people are not concerned about how their voice sounds later no, no, no. on the recording. No. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I think if you were buying your first headset or you need to buy a new headset and those were things that matter to you, that's a pretty good headset. Yeah, I mean, it, comfort is everything. Yeah. Right? That's, ultimately, that is the key thing to any headset or any helmet or whatever it is you've got to wear. Yeah. And so far on this flight, I'm not going to tell you which camera, but one of the cameras shut off. It overheated. Well, I guess you're going to figure it out. <laughs> I guess you're going to... There are two cameras up here on the glare shield. One of them overheated. 
um, and shut off. And it's it's not a particularly hot day, but the sun, you know, beating in through the mm. warms it up inside. Um, so to me, that's a bit of a problem because it's summer. It, it wouldn't stand a chance. No. No. But we'll get to that in the next video. <laughs> and since, you know, I I haven't been given any of these cameras for free since I paid for them out of my own pocket. Leaving altitude. And I've, I've spent a very long time being very critical of film gear. I'm going to be very critical of all these cameras in that episode. Because I, I just, I'm not going to hold anything back. Surprising how hot they are, though. Yeah. Oshawa Tower, this is Fox Hot Mike Victor Uniform. Oshawa Mike Victor Uniform, Oshawa Tower. Oshawa Tower, Mike Victor Uniform is a Cessna 172 with information to India currently at 3,000 feet above the town of Uxbridge, inbound for landing, full stop. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, Squawk 1237. 1237, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform Tower identified, runway 12 wind 0907, altimeter 3034. Crew straight in approach, runway 12, report 5 mile final. Straight in 12, report 5 mile final, Mike Victor Uniform. Okay, everything's on, everything's in. Tanks are both, bags are both locked. Carp is on, mixture is rich. Whiskey Lima Uniform Tower exit left, Charlie contact ground 184. Charlie ground, uh, Whiskey Lima Uniform. Thanks for that. Oshawa Tower, Golf Alpha Tango Delta. Alpha Tango Delta Tower, continue and then I'll be back to you. Copy. Whiskey, going to make it back to our winds 1206, clear touch and go, runway 12. What's going on? Lake Victor Uniform Tower, now number 2, following a Cherokee ahead on final spacing, good. Lake Victor Uniform Tower, traffic exiting runway 05, winds 1207, clear to land runway 12. Clear 12, Mike Victor Uniform. Whiskey, going to make it back to our number 1, advise ready to turn the base. Whiskey, let me make it back. Wow, there's... Way to win. Six planes holding for takeoff. How is it? 1425. Victor, Bravo, Victor, tower line up and wait, runway 1-2, traffic exit. Line up and wait, runway 1-2, Victor, Bravo, Victor. <laughs> 